So this is the third video in the favourites video series that I've been making and today I'm going to talk to you about my favourite children's picture books. In my first video I go into quite a bit of detail about what it is that I'm aiming to do with these series of videos, how it is that I've categorised the books and so on. So I will link that in the description below and in the eye just up here so that you can go and check that out if you want to get more information. A lot of people on booktube and book Instagram and book Twitter have done at various points in time their favorites list of standalone books or series or whatever it might be so I'm sure you get the general idea. Today I want to talk to you about my favorite children's picture books. As most of you probably know I am an early childhood educator and primary school teacher so I spend a lot of time thinking about children's literacy, thinking about stories, to engage children, thinking about stories to help them to learn about other aspects of the world and life and learning, thinking about the illustrations and how engaging they are. So I now have a list of 10 favourite children's books that I would like to share with you. These are my favourite children's books because they take into account various aspects that I just mentioned and I love reading them aloud to children. All of these books are very beloved by all of the children that I have taught in various capacities whether it be as an educator in a daycare centre, a relief teacher in a primary school or what have you. So without further ado let's get going. They're not really in any particular order although I have ordered them but it's not necessarily favourite to least favourite in this instance but anyway. The first lot I want to talk to you about is a series of books called Pig the Pug. So Pig is a pug and he is rude, he is selfish, he's constantly doing things to his flatmate who is a sausage dog called Trevor that aren't very nice. He's always getting Trevor into trouble, uh, he's always pushing himself into the limelight and generally he is not a particularly nice character. However, the books are beautiful. They're incredibly well written, they are fun, they are funny, they are silly. The pictures are very simplistic and to the point but they're beautiful and these are a lot of fun. Children absolutely love these books. They do have a moral at the end but the moral is told to the audience in such a fun, funny way. So rather than us being sort of almost preached at about pig's behaviour. Pig's very selfish and self-involved and thoughtless behaviour always winds up in pig being injured in some amusing fashion and having to be cared for or having to be careful or having to rethink the way that he behaves, particularly in relation to how he behaves towards Trevor. Aaron Blaby is the author of these books and he's just a fantastic children's author. He writes morals in such a beautiful interesting engaging way that children just love to read his books and love to learn the morals from the books so I highly recommend the Pick the Pug series if you are looking for books that will teach children to be a little bit more thoughtful, to be less selfish, to be less self-involved but also just have a really great time at the same time. The next book I want to share with you is another Aaron Blaby book and that is a book called Film of the Unicorn. In a similar fashion this is a well-written story that has beautiful and engaging illustrations that tells the story of Thelma who is a little pony that dreams of being a unicorn. One day she has the opportunity to pretend to be a unicorn and this pretense throws her into the limelight and suddenly she is super famous but with that comes all sorts of issues and problems that she didn't foresee that she doesn't like and she ends up realizing that actually she kind of just wants to be who she really is which is a little pony called Thelma who has a best friend called Otis. It's a really sweet story and it's written in such a delightful amusing engaging way kids love this book. Definitely a great one for children from pretty much birth up to like seven or eight years old. Highly recommend. Next up we have Possum Magic written by Mem Fox 
and illustrated by Julie Beavis. This is a classic Australian children's book. It is about two possums in the Australian bush, one of whom is the baby possum Hush and Grandma Poss who does bush magic. The bush magic she is most proud of is the bush magic that turned Hush invisible to keep Hush safe. But Hush doesn't want to be invisible and so Grandma tries to find the reversal spell but she can't remember what it is and then eventually she realizes that it is food but it's people food rather than possum food and this launches them into a fantastic adventure across the entire continent of Australia from Sydney up to Darwin and down to Hobart in Tasmania. It's so much fun the possums traveling around Australia and going visiting these important landmarks in Australia, eating really famous Australian food. It's just gorgeous and it's super fun. The illustrations are so engaging and interesting. Kids love recognizing place names and places that they know, particularly given that I live in Tasmania and teach in Tasmania. I have noticed that the children absolutely love references to Tasmania and the possums end up traveling to Tasmania in an upside down umbrella which absolutely has the kids in stitches every time they read it they love 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 that part honestly this book might not be that fantastic if you don't happen to live in Australia because there is so much iconic Australian things in the book but I still think it's a lot of fun and it's certainly a really interesting way for children who don't necessarily live in Australia to learn about Australia and you could get out a map and have a look at where Australia is and where they're traveling to and, and learn more about another country so I still definitely recommend as a great book for children from pretty much anywhere. Next up we have two books which are aimed at children who are a little older than the normal demographic for picture books and those are The Water Tower and Beneath the Surface by Gary Crew. I don't actually recall who the illustrator is but I will put an image of the books up here so you'll see who the illustrator is. This is a mystery book, it is paranormal, it references aliens or some kind of weird paranormal situation that is happening. It's very intense, it is very interesting the way that it's written, it really engages children to think about lots of different aspects of literacy and reading and enjoying books. I just love it. I love the illustrations. I think they're just gorgeous. I love the storyline. I love the mystery aspect of it. I love the repeating motifs that you will see throughout the book. I just think it's incredibly well done. I have read this book to children in grade three and four so eight and nine year olds and they loved both of these books they really really enjoyed them and were really engaged with the imagery so it's definitely not something that you need to be nervous about children older children reading it's set in Australia but it's not super iconically Australian in the same way it's possum magic so it could be set anywhere and therefore is very accessible to anyone definitely recommend they're amazing. Next up we have Wilfred Gordon McDonald Partridge also written by Mem Fox and illustrated by Julie Vivas. It is a really really sweet story. It's about a young boy called Wilfred Gordon McDonald Partridge and he lives next door to a nursing home and he is friendly with a lot of the residents of the nursing home. One in particular who has four names just like he does. I can't remember what they all are but one of them is Nancy. Anyway, he one day overhears his parents talking about the fact that she is losing her memory and so he wants to try and help her but doesn't quite understand what a memory is. So he goes to the nursing home and he asks his various friends what's a memory and they give him all sorts of cryptic answers like something warm or something soft. So Wilfred Gordon goes and collects a variety of different objects like a puppet and chicken eggs and he gives these to Miss Delacourt which is her surname um, and she thinks it's very strange but she thinks it's very lovely and but she does actually start to remember different things through touching and engaging with these gifts it's just it's a really sweet sweet story and it's a little long for children who are under sort of about five but it is just really lovely and really sweet. Next up we have Penguin Problems by 
Jory John and Lane Smith. This is such a cute little story that is told from the point of view of a little penguin who has so many problems. It's really engaging and interesting and fun. I really like the fact that it gives children an opportunity to really experience other people's problems but it's also very believable because children do have a lot of things that upsets them or cause them anxiety which maybe don't appear to be particularly big to adult eyes but actually are really big issues for children so I think it's really engaging in that way because it's very believable and very understandable to those children. I think that it's super cute, the illustrations are just adorable. Every time I've read this to a group of children they absolutely loved it and thought it was hilarious. There is a very pompous walrus at the end that the kids think is hilarious as well. Definitely a fantastic book. It's a particularly great book to read aloud using funny voices if you happen to be a person that likes to do that so highly recommend. Then we have Great Paper Caper written by Oliver Jeffers. I think Oliver Jeffers did the illustrations, I'm not 100% sure. The Great Paper Caper is a mystery book and basically it is about a group of forest animals who are trying to figure out who keeps chopping out various bits of trees or chopping down various trees and they set up a crime scene investigation unit they have court scenes and they do all of this to try and find the culprit and prosecute the culprit but then at the end they realized that it, the bear who was actually doing this was doing it because he wanted to win a competition so he needed paper. It's a really lovely story, it's really well written, the illustrations are just gorgeous, definitely engaging, kids would love it. Again it's humorous but it's also really engaging from a mystery point of view so again definitely recommend. Next up we have Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus by Mo Willems. This book is so much fun, it's completely interactive so children just love it. It is about a pigeon who wants to drive the bus but the bus driver has broken the fourth wall and spoken directly to the reader and asked the reader specifically not to let the pigeon drive the bus. So the pigeon also breaks the fourth wall and attempts to convince the reader to let him drive the bus. He offers all sorts of things to try and convince the reader, he offers bribes, he goes completely out of his way to try and convince the reader to let him drive the bus. There are various points throughout the story where you are encouraged as the, the reader to pause and allow the children to respond. The prompted response is no, but of course you get all sorts of different responses, particularly if you happen to be an educator or teacher reading to a large group. It's just so much fun. The pictures are super fun, very simplistic but really engaging. Definitely an awesome, awesome book. And number 10 is The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carle. This is another iconic book. It is about a caterpillar's life cycle. So you start with the egg, the caterpillar pops out, he eats leaves, he gets very hungry, he eats a whole bunch of stuff, he feels a bit sick, then he makes a cocoon and out comes a beautiful butterfly. It's a really fun engaging way to teach children about life cycles, about caterpillars, about butterflies. It's just beautiful. It's funny because the caterpillar eats all sorts of human food like ice cream. The pictures are beautiful I definitely love this book. Alright guys so that was my top 10 children's picture book. If you have read any of these books please comment below and let me know. If you are interested in reading any of these books I'd love to know that as well. What you thought of my choices for my 10 favourite kids picture books please comment below and let me know. Thank you so much for watching I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel and I'll see you next time.